How are you doing everyone? It's Danny Wilson from Boxing Science. In this video, we're going to be looking at hand strength assessments for boxing, and this is presented by Ian Gatt. This is a taster from the Boxing Science online conference, which is now available at the Boxing Science website. This was a fantastic event that we hosted in April, and now you can get access to the workshops at a click of a button. Just click the link in the description to find out more information. In this video, we're going to be giving you an example of the presentation led by Ian Gatt. Ian Gatt is fantastic. He's worked at GB Boxing for many years and is also a head physiotherapist to Anthony Joshua. In this presentation, Ian goes into the science behind hand injuries and how to prevent them, and then looking at some strength assessments and how to profile an athlete on what they need to work on in order to protect their hands and wrists from injury. Like I say, if you're interested in this workshop and the remainder of the workshops from the online conference, uh, go check it out. The link is in the description for more information. What I'm going to show you, so this is actually going to be an endurance test for the thumb, which is useful for when you're getting all these overuse injuries, but also as a prevention. And then I'll show you a strength test around the elbows and a strength test around the shoulders, so you get a bit of an idea. So this is a simple one. This is called pinch plate holds. What you get is obviously making sure you've got dry hands, is just holding. So obviously you use a timer. If they manage to get up to one minute, they're doing well. If they get to two minutes, you can stop it because they're brilliant. But what you do is you keep on holding it. Can I, can I drop the weight? Am I right to drop the weight? Yeah? Yeah, sound. So what happens is you wait, wait, wait. One goes, you keep on the timer going. Goes, goes, goes. And then you calculate the difference. So simple as that. But that test can become very good because it can promote you to thinking, what can I do? Is there a true weakness or not? So we'll do this, we'll have one group here. So one of the things you can do is get them sitting down, okay? So I've chose this just to get a bit higher there, okay? And what you wanna do is you wanna find the highest weight they can do, it's not a one RM, okay? It's the highest weight they can do though to be able to do one repetition without compensations, without having to move everything. So for example, obviously we have a few jumps here, but you go five, six, seven, eight, whatever. But say this is a five and I can just about do it okay. Then I put the six and it's like, oh no, I can't do that. Go for the five and then see how many repetitions they can trash with that. But what you want to do with this is, so you can see I'm slightly below 90 there, but you want to go from here, full 90, all the way till here and drop that little bit extra. This is where it becomes the difference. Here, lots of people can do it easily. The extra bit is the extra bit needed for the deceleration we talked about and the extra control. So literally what they're going to do is they go up and down. They go up and down. They go up and down. Still fatigue, obviously. But if you give them a five kilo and, you know, probably can trash out a million, who knows, but not everybody. And the main thing, again, is you're looking at the difference. So even if you think like, you know what, I could have probably given him a, a bigger weight. Don't worry. You're not trying to calculate the RM per se here, although you could. You guys are experts in that. Be trying to see a difference. And it might be that you give them a very low weight. You wanted to start by testing strength. It turns out in an endurance test. Doesn't matter. But you're trying to find a difference. And that will help guide you. This is your strongest action. Because brachioradialis is the strongest muscle. So your hammer curls is what you'd expect any athlete to live the most of. Your second best is usually biceps. Your least is this position, so reverse curls. Because you eliminate biceps, you eliminate brachioradialis, you're left with brachialis, it's a muscle that works all the time but slow, but it's really giving you those wrists. And you think about boxers, that's where they get the big injuries of the hand. So a really nice test you can do here is, ooh, and if you do it properly, you'll feel the burn. Now, here's something you have to be careful of. It's not just about, so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm here, so I'm not doing all that. And also I'm putting the elbow here because if you put them down here, either this goes out or they wag themselves. So just get them to have the hand there and get the whole movement. Now, one of the things that you don't want them to do, which can happen when it's weak, is this. Because if it starts burning or weak, it rotates. You know, stop, 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 turn it. Oh, I can't do it. Okay, fail, stop. 
You've done five reps, that's it. You've done six reps, seven reps. But this rotation is important because once they start doing that, it means they're starting to fatigue. So you need to keep that pronation. You need to keep that rotation, okay? You need to keep the wrist from breaking also. So when they're here, it's not a clean. It stays, 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 stays all the way. We did an overview of the injuries, looked at the upper limb injuries, particularly talking about the kinetics and the kinematics, fancy words, the forces and the movements that can make the injuries. We looked at the hands and wrists, we looked at the elbow, we looked at the shoulders. How can we break down those three joints for an assessment, if you're looking at strength or endurance, to try and find some deficiencies? And then with that in mind, what exercises can we do as part of the gym? We're well, looking either as a prevention, an injury management or just general conditioning in those areas, whether it is isolated or in compound movements, particularly thinking boxing specific. First of all, hopefully they took away some knowledge, knowledge about why the injuries are happening in the different areas, some knowledge about how you could test in a reliable manner, but also that element of understanding, you know, the quantitative part, the numbers. So what are those hidden jams when you look at a data sheet and so for me having the opportunity to actually deliver some knowledge around a brilliant sport like boxing to coaches and to strength and conditioning coaches and bridge that medical and that sports science together was really a great opportunity. Mm -hmm.